Welcome to all my furless two-legged friends out there. Today we'll learn that Among Us is fat phobic, kinda sus, from Inked Ravens of Despair. When Among Us was really popular, I didn't like when people drew the astronauts skinny. Like, if you're gonna take the time to draw all the details of a spacesuit, what is the point of being fat phobic, lol? Uh, the Among Us characters couldn't be more amorphous blobs if they tried. From a bunch of numbers, not sure I believe this. For your information, just because she's plus-sized does not mean she's unhealthy. I've seen a skinny 300-pound woman and a plus-sized woman that was only a little over 100 pounds. Read the book before spitting on the cover. OCR Amazon. A skinny 300-pound woman? Pedunculated. Yeah, she was 8 foot 10 inches tall. From Ball Bag 4. I don't think these calories are being properly counted somehow. From my experience, personally, and being surrounded by many plus-sized people in my family, I can tell you this is true. I was on a constant diet for 18 years, always trying to eat less. My dad is 6 feet tall, that's about 2 meters, works manual labor and maintains on around 1,200 to 1,800 calories. At one point, I gained 2 pounds a week eating 1,600 calories. When the metabolic system breaks, your body stores all the food coming in as fat instead of creating energy. It sucks. Gatling Station. My metabolic system broke once. Once. It was nasty. I distinctly remember. Because I died. From Dorkita. Totally normal response to food by intuitive eaters. Odd question for you folks. Do you ever want to cry when eating? I've never had an eating disorder, and while I've done diets, I've never been a lifelong dieter. I eat what I want, and I feel like I've mostly ditched the diet poop. Body issues are a different thing. That's a story for another day. But sometimes, food makes me so happy, or I feel so happy to eat that I get teary-eyed. It's like the other side of hangry. I've even tried to Google it, but haven't found anything on it. I'm not depressed. It's almost like the feeling of what I imagine a baby might feel when they eat. It's weird. Maybe I'm alone in this weirdness? Lol. I understand what you mean. Sometimes the food makes me feel so happy I almost feel... Drunk? I definitely have a few meals that make me feel over the top. It's not weird. It makes sense to get emotional about something that was so fraught for so long. No, that's totally normal. I've had an emotional response to food, especially if I haven't had a lot to eat that day. And I finally had a substantial meal. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think if you're crying over food and you haven't been literally starving, there's probably something wrong with From Carbohydrate King. BED isn't a thing. Goodbye. Hey, I had a quick look at your post history, and you seem to be having a really hard time. I say this on here a lot, but I really recommend the Effet Diet by Caroline Dooner. You say you have BED, but Caroline says that BED isn't a real thing. If you're binging, it's likely in response to a restriction. I can see that you've been trying intermittent fasting, and also that you worry a lot about your weight. These things are restrictive and are not going to help you. You need to remove this guilt and shame. There is nothing wrong with you. Please read the book. I hate to see people suffering and blaming themselves the way you are. Malefice Empathy replied, Binging is often a response to restriction. Yes. The secret is that by eating nutritious, regular meals in moderation and having some flexibility in your diet instead of hard, restrictive rules, you are less likely to binge. Eating only one cookie is easier. If you eat it for dessert, guilt-free, and save the rest for tomorrow. If your mindset is, oh no, I failed, this is the last time I'll eat cookies, so I might as well eat them all. Or if you have the cookie, after eating very few healthy calories a day, no wonder it turns into a binge. So the answer isn't to start eating as much as you want, of whatever you want. It's to learn to eat healthy, with moderation and flexibility. From Blue Orion. Seems like humans are different kinds of fruit? All fruit, all delicious, all beautiful. Small and round, blueberries. Larger at the top and petite at the bottom, strawberries. Widest in the middle, kiwi. Round with slight curves, apple. Very defined curves, pear. Plump with a thinner part. I have no idea what fruit that is. One of the biggest, watermelon. We are so happy to accept diversity among so many things in nature. Doggos, trees, flowers, fruit. Hey, wait a second. You should check out my de-chonkers at the end of this video and all my other fat logic videos. Making your dog fat 
is not okay and it is not good for them. But when it comes to humans, we are told to believe that everyone should be one size, thin. Can we please start to acknowledge that diversity also occurs among humans? We come tall, short, fat, thin, curvy, straight up and down, and that is not just perfectly okay, it is beautiful. Encourage diversity, embrace diversity, and most of all, don't poop on it. Also known as be fat phobic, thanks. Embarrassed smile. Witchy cheetah. Today I learned humans are multiple species. From Diane Heck. How dare you sell clothes that don't fit me? One star review. Make your clothes for real women. Your company needs to quit selling your clothes to size zero or size double zero. Everyday women are not size zero or size double zero. Making clothing this size just keeps that idea in society that you have to be size zero to wear trendy clothes. How about making something that a real woman could wear? Your models need to eat a cheeseburger sometime. Size purchased 30 wide X regular. This item fits very small. Recommend sizing up two sizes. Would you recommend? No. Lurking Virgo. Today I learned no women are a size zero. Go figure. Better reach out to some of my petite friends and let them know. They aren't real women. Not Cinderella. No one is ever five feet. That's not a real height. From Bakery. Your body reverses its nutrients if you're not getting enough food. Is it me or is anyone else just not hungry anymore? Online school is literally ruining my eating schedule. Skull. And I still ain't losing weight like slap, sad face. I beginning like, what? Smiling and crying. Because your body reverses its nutrients if you're not getting enough food, you gain weight. Blue Targ. <coughs> Whoops, my nutrients are reversing. Look out! From Solon Avalanche. It's down to 1% now? I'm not in a larger body, but work as an anti-diet dietitian, so have to deal with diet culture a lot. There's something about thin people telling larger people that it's okay to be obese. That reminds me of rich people telling poor people to just stay poor. It just rubs me the wrong way. I usually try to throw in the whole, yeah, but did you know that studies show only 1% of people on diets maintain weight loss long term? So why don't we try some other strategies first, etc. Also, doctors know next to nothing about diets anyway. So if possible, suggest getting the dietitian's opinion, if there's one in your hospital health center. For some reason, it's hard for people to grasp the concept that it's the health-promoting behaviors that improve health, not weight loss and isolation. Grotry. I'm reminded of the guy who lost weight on a Twinkie. Not exclusively Twinkies, I guess. He also ate Doritos and Oreos on a multivitamin diet. His health markers improved significantly. Source, I'll show that in a second. Unfortunately, I don't think we can make a bigger study to verify his findings, since I suspect it wouldn't pass any ethics board worth the name. So it's limited to a singular case study, but nonetheless. No, it's not just about health-promoting behaviors. Weight itself matters, hugely so. You can't outkale morbid obesity. Here's the source, from CNN, written by Madison Park. I'm not showing the whole article, just the title. From November 8th, 2010, Twinkie Diet Helps Nutrition Professor Lose 27 Pounds. They talk in the article about how he improved his cholesterol and other numbers, as well as reducing his weight on a diet of mostly junk food, but he controlled his calories. From Free Design. Newsflash! Being healthy doesn't mean you're healthy. Health is not measured by taking 10,000 steps a day, eating 5 to 9 servings of fruit and veggies a day, According to the research I've seen, you should be taking in 10 servings of fruit and veg a day to get the best results. More than that doesn't seem to help. Anyway. Health is not measured by how many ounces of water you drink. What your body type is. Being in the gym six days a week. The number on the scale. Throwaway account replied. I mean, how much water you drink is super, super important to your health. I say, as the idiot who got lactic acidosis from not drinking enough water. Bat Country replied, Is this a reference to Avenged Sevenfold? One of my family members went to the ER with heart arrhythmia a ton of times before one of his doctors was like, Hey, before we put you on this expensive medication, do you drink any water ever? And that completely solved the problem. 
from Sullen Avalanche. Checkmate, I guess? It's never healthy to be obese. I have to half disagree here. Yes, you can be stressed, but becoming obese is a high risk factor for Bud-19 related death. There's a lot of overweight people who are a heck of a lot healthier than those who appear slim or so-called healthy weight. We cannot determine someone's health by their weight. Also, not everyone can lose weight to be a so-called healthy level. I'm talking about obese. Obese is never healthy. Again, I am classed as heavily obese per my BMI. I'm pretty sure heavily obese is not a category. I have multiple health conditions that can leave me bed bound but I'm still healthier than some slim people. Talk about cherry picking your data. From Wanderlust Wonders. Every body is prone to be unhealthy. This logic is so toxic. Staring eyes. Being obese or underweight is clinically a medical issue in and of itself, regardless of whether the remainder of your insides are healthy. Why do y'all shrug it off and advertise it like we should all be doing this? Love your body, sure. Do any of you love it enough to know when enough is enough? Excuse me? What real response are you looking for, ma'am? Thin people have so many medical issues as well. Newsflash, lady. Every body is prone to being unhealthy. You know what is also unhealthy? Health concerns. It doesn't matter what anyone's health is. All you care about is being rude as fudge. Worry about your own darn self. Get off my page. Go meditate on why you think what you're doing is remotely okay. What you're doing is the antithesis of health, actually. Darn. Goodbye, somebody. Wanderlust wonders responds to herself. Newsflash, everyone. Health concerns are actually the unhealthy thing. Never listen to doctors. Eat what you want. Be as big as you want. All that matters is you do not talk about health concerns. From Brocky Sticks. Is that what Baby Yoda calls celery? An easy fix to many problems? It was malpractice. Prescribing weight loss to a fat patient with joint pain when you would perform diagnostics and prescribe physical therapy to a thin patient is malpractice. Banana lamp. Prescribing different solutions to different patients who have different health histories? So inappropriate. Health should be one size fits all. From Ava Bad. Don't you hate when exercise machines tell you information about your workout? Post-gym thoughts. I hate how Planet Fitness machines have the calorie count on them. I went back to the gym for the first time today since February, and I wanted chicken nuggets afterward. I found myself counting how many chicken nuggets equated to what I had burned off. Fudge that noise. That's not what working out is about to me. It's feeling good in my body, getting some endorphins going, that's all. Darn diet culture in my head. Right count. Then ignore the number? That's like complaining that the thermometer is showing warm weather, but you want to wear a nice sweater. Do what you want, but don't get mad that information is visible. Another from Ava Bad. Who isn't 200 pounds with high cholesterol from all the stress of 2020? Good morning. I've been following this group and others like it for a few months and I'm still working on my relationship with food and my body image. When I went to the doctor recently, actually a nurse practitioner, she sent me for blood work, which showed a slightly elevated cholesterol count. It's not crazy high, but she's interested in prevention, not medication. Her solution is for me to lose about 30 pounds to be less than 200. I haven't been less than 200 in about 15 years. How would I find a doctor who's supportive of HAES and IE? And a similar question, how do you approach family members who think you should lose weight and frequently offer weight loss tips and recipes? Could you imagine the horror of someone giving you a recipe for food that tastes good? <sighs> Makes me want to crawl into an air vent and wait for all the evil recipes to go away. And continuing. Whose cholesterol isn't elevated to all the stress of 2020? I feel like I want to say congrats, you're a human. Your body is reacted to the most stress year in history. I hope English isn't her first language. With only a slight cholesterol elevation. Darn good job, sister. To handle unwanted diet advice requires strong boundaries. I believe medical professionals mean well, but are clueless about the harm they are causing. Two choices. One, say something and educate them. Two, say nothing because it's not your job to spread the gospel. 
Intuitive eating is a choice and it's your choice. End of story. It's still annoying, but you get to choose how to react. I can't believe her doctor was trying to prevent medical issues instead of just loading her up on drugs. What has the world come to? What? Posted by Vine and Vale. How to talk to your gym front desk to make it a safe space for you. Remember, policing other people's language is the only way to feel better about yourself. Double ice cream cone. Unfortunately, it's common for fitness classes and gym to be the hub for body, diet, weight talk. To avoid this, you can start to find non-diet, body-positive gym spaces, and in the meantime, practice some responses in case it does come up. Some things you can say at the front desk if you see, hear, or notice negative, unwanted, or shaming comments. Response. Hey, I really enjoyed your workouts in space. You might want to consider talking to your instructors about the language they use during class. Some of their comments aren't actually that helpful and are a real turnoff for me and others wanting to work out here. Here's a good blog post explaining more. Maybe it's just me thinking this, but being turned on in a workout class maybe isn't the best thing. Response. I wish you guys weren't hosting this challenge. I love your trainers and philosophy here, but this challenge feels like it goes against what you normally talk about. I like moving because it feels good and I feel stronger, not because I want to feel like I need to be smaller. Response. Hey, blank. I really like your class and normally feel so motivated during it. I noticed today you said something about earning our desserts tonight. That was really triggering to me. And I'm sure some other people who come to and love your classes too. I just wanted to let you know. I come to your class because I normally love your message, but I don't like to mix my exercise with earning food. It doesn't make me feel good. OCR Amazon. Oh my goodness. Do not report this stuff to the poor college kids working at the front desk for $8 an hour. Please don't. If you feel the absolute need to go all Rambo on the fitness staff at your gym, ask the front desk workers for the email address of the person in charge of the fitness programming. But seriously, the instructor is trying to motivate an entire room full of people who all have different motivations, which is a nearly impossible task. Not everyone will be moved by everything he or she says, so she or he has to cast a wide net and say a lot of stuff. From Elmir 2000 You can't assume anything about someone just by looking at them, but it's okay if I do it. Please understand that many people who have hot bodies are disordered in their eating or have eating disorders. Our culture celebrating these bodies means that people are less likely to stop these unhealthy behaviors instead of seeing them for the disorders they are. Oh, this next sentence kills me. Proofreading apparently is really hard when you write long posts. What is society considers a hot or beautiful body changes over time. No matter what the desired body is, there will always be some people who are born with it and others trying to attain it. And those trying to attain it will often resort to strenuous or unhealthy means to get it and keep it since most people are not born with the desired body of the day. Actually, most people find baby bodies to be extremely cute and they want to hug them all day long. If it was common, it wouldn't be given the status it is. Most people resort to disordered eating to become babyish, sometimes turning it into an eating disorder to attain it. And because so many people are following suit to attain this body, again, a baby body, this distorted way of eating becomes normalized and praised because of the result. I guess the eating would involve drinking a lot of milk and wearing a diaper? But if we didn't idealize certain bodies over others, or rather we celebrated the beauty of body diversity, we would see eating and, and other means people use to get their bodies like exercise, become less extreme and more balanced. Who's exercising to get a baby body? So know that while unfortunately disordered eating and eating disorders are common and normal, they aren't healthy and the result of the desired body can come at a heavy cost long-term to one's overall well-being. It's true. I can't imagine a baby body is very healthy for an adult. From the Expert 77. Would you suggest a non-alcoholic to stop drinking? This is malpractice. When you refuse medical care until a patient becomes thin, ner, you are holding their health and well-being at ransom. Fat people deserve ethical evidence-based care in the bodies we have now. Refusing to give us the same treatment that a thin person in the same situation would be given is malpractice. So we're just ignoring the fact that two different people can't actually be in the same situation? Okay, moving on. 
It's holding our health and well-being for ransom until we look like the healthcare practitioner wants us to look. Let me assure you, 99% of doctors could not care less how you look. Not to mention there's not a single study where more than a tiny fraction of people succeed at significant long-term weight loss. Not true. If you exercise, the success rate for five years is over 50%. So it's a ransom. There's almost no chance we'll be able to pay. 50-50 shot. Intentional weight loss does not meet the criteria for an evidence-based intervention. And even if it did, it would still be inappropriate to refuse to treat fat people unless and until we become thinner people. To do so is to hold the philosophy that some people aren't worthy of health care based on how they look at that is simply appalling. I mean, that's literally not what's happening. They're saying the first line of treatment is to lose weight and that'll probably improve your condition. I found a useful question to ask at the doctor's office is, what would you give a thin person with this issue? Though, of course, fat people shouldn't have to strategize just to get competent health care. You're literally trying to take competent health care and make it into incompetent health care where they just give you medication and, let me add, side effects, which you probably don't want. From Love Dove Bunny. So admirable to be upset at a post talking about working out and fitness. Hello, folks. I'm wondering if you could help me. A very close friend of mine posted a before and after photo on Instagram. Not necessarily a weight loss one, but more fitness and tone with weight loss as a symptom of working out. In the description, she wrote about how she's proud of working out for her and the progress she's made on herself. I'm a fat person and seeing my friend do this is upsetting and disappointing. And I want to talk and educate her a bit on why this is wrong, hurtful, fat phobic, and shameful. Are there any articles or in general points I should make in this gentle message to her? I would really appreciate it. Bless you for taking on this work. I tend to just unfollow even my own sister. I don't have advice, but want to express my admiration and appreciation for you being willing to do this. Sometimes I wonder what happens to these people when they finally leave the fat logic cult. Do they try to make amends with all the people that they've shamed along the way? The world may never know. From Sparky. Fat activist pet peeve. Doctors are fat phobic for the money when 99% of developed countries have free health care. Ugh. As an American, I feel that. America-centric paranoia. Maddening. Also, gyms and diet predated capitalism. You fudging clown. Clown. Health is rooted in capitalism. The reason diet culture and gyms exist is to solely make money, pure and simple. We created this false doctrine about health to convince people that if they eat these so-called healthy brands, go to the gym and try these diets to lose weight, then you'll be healthy, also known as skinny, and beautiful. Which of course means spending a lot of money to achieve this ideal body that society has conditioned us to want. I'm really hoping English is our second or third language. Continue. And yes, doctors are well aware of this. They know losing weight is impossible. Yet they keep suggesting it. Why? Because patients will keep coming back after these failed attempts thinking it was their own fault. Then the doctor prescribes them another diet to try. Then the patient comes back again thinking it's their own fault. All the while, the doctors, gyms, and diet book authors have a renewable source of money. We need to fight against diet culture, and one way for us to do this is realizing that weight is not correlated with health. They say that, but weight is literally correlated with health. I think they meant to say, correlation is not causation. It's important to keep your dogma straight when you're spouting BS. Remember that for whenever you want to start your own cult. The more you know. From the Lil Jim Rat. Hungry, hungry caterpillar. We are the very hungry caterpillars. I read Eric Carle's book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, aloud to my children last night. Although I've read it many, many times in the last six years, this was the first time I've read it since beginning intuitive eating. This book spoke to me on a whole new meaning. I'm sure most of you have read it, but for those of you who haven't, a tiny caterpillar hatches and he is very hungry. So he starts by eating through an apple but he's still hungry. So he eats through two pears, still hungry. So he eats through three plums, four strawberries, and five oranges. Guess what? Still hungry. You turn through the page and see that he's eaten through a huge assortment of pleasure foods, including pie, ice cream, cheese, candy, cake, watermelon, and sausage. That night, he had a tummy ache. Then the next day, he ate through a nice green leaf and felt much better. So far, this description's accurate. You know, except for them forgetting the holes in the book, which are the best part. 
but watched them get the wrong lesson from it. Now the caterpillar wasn't tiny anymore. He was a big fat caterpillar. He builds a cocoon around himself and waits. He turned the page and find out that he's turned into a beautiful butterfly. The Hagglepoise replied, the takeaway from that book was not, eat as much as you like and you'll transform into a beautiful butterfly. Also note, our good caterpillar friend only gets sick after he plows his way through mountains of junk food. He feels better after he eats a leaf. Hmm, face? From World's Best Lasagna. Yikes! Obesity does not cause type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a disorder that causes sugar to build up in the blood. So far so good. It develops as the body's cells become significantly resistant to insulin. Like, for example, if they filled up with sugar or something. Making it difficult for those cells to use sugar for fuel. Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas to help usher sugar into cells for energy. I mean, it's true that obesity doesn't cause diabetes, but bad eating can, not always, but can cause type 2 diabetes. By the way, does anyone know what language they were using Instagram in? 91 Tika Tasta. Sometimes chocolate is more health promoting than fruit. Several studies have shown that eating chocolate has the ability to increase the likelihood of a positive mood, but these results are heightened when the chocolate is intuitively eaten. These results have been consistent throughout research. When we eat intuitively, we reap more benefit from food. If you were to crave chocolate but deem it unhealthy and decide to satisfy the craving with fruit instead, you may not experience all the benefits that fruit had to offer. Citation needed. Four reasons why weight loss is unhealthy. On the 2nd of June, I will be hosting a lecture where I will be talking about why intentional weight loss can be harmful to our health. This is a presentation that I will be presenting here live in four weeks, but will be doing it on an online format shortly after. That is to say, I can't prove it, but I'm going to give you a lot of BS later about it. If your idea of the non-diet approach includes moderation and balance, you're not anti-diet. Intuitive eating, in many ways, is becoming the newest fad diet, but it should be called the eat when you're hungry and stop in your full diet. Oh, the horror. This is under the realm of the wellness diet. This is not a non-diet approach, not even a little bit. In fact, I'd argue it's even more dangerous than many diets because of the way it's branded as a non-diet. I guess what they said is technically true. From their point of view, moderation and balance is not anti-diet. There is no evidence that supports any specific diet that will help you lose weight and keep it off. But I'm sure you're thinking that there's been a ton of research that has found that XYZ diet helps someone lose weight. And this is true. Participants in these studies would have lost weight. But after the intervention is finished, they most likely gained it back, even if they stuck the intervention diet. From what I've found, people who don't exercise have a 75% chance of gaining the weight back in five years. And people who do exercise have a less than 50% chance of gaining the weight back after five years. So I guess the thinking here is, if it's not a 100% chance, don't bother trying. Strange attitude. Sometimes the healthiest thing you can do is not prioritize your health. Hmm. Strong claims require strong evidence. And often not prioritizing diet culture's version of health is the most health promoting thing you can do. I have written posts about how during recovery, prioritizing health isn't a good idea. But by that, I meant physical health and the majority of the time diet culture's version of health. Take a step back from nutrition and exercise and can lend to your health in so many ways and will often give you more benefits than excessively prioritizing nutrition and exercise. I will agree that taking care of your mental health is important, but your body is part of you and you should really take care of that too. Obetrol and Cocktails replied, These things create such a rage in me that sometimes I need to unsubscribe for a few days. From Makatsuku's, it's bad that we don't see people getting obese being applauded. 50 inspiring people showing what willpower and hard work can do. It's an article about people losing weight. Before and after photos are so incredibly fat phobic and dehumanizing, you don't ever see the reverse of this being applauded or celebrated as an achievement. And the after photo is always seen as goals, model material, an ideal or perfect body compared to the before picture. And that's just wrong. All bodies, no matter what size and shape, are human and deserving of being treated with respect and love, not shame, discrimination, and cruelty. Ancient matter. There's so many before and after pictures of people beating anorexia, also known as gaining weight. 
I found an article with 120 of them. From Duck Lady 92 on a company page that finds marrow donors for terminally ill patients. Their weight stipulations are that your BMI must be under 40 and are for the donor's safety, but it's discrimination. Sad that you guys discriminate against fat people. So many lives could be saved if you gave us a chance. I don't think it's discrimination. It has to do with health and the process. No one is saying they just don't want fat people marrow. There's a medical reason for it. There isn't a medical reason if they refuse to even test you. So yes, it's discrimination. It's more of a health risk to people overweight to be donors. It's not simply because they don't want fat people to donate. What incentive would anyone have to discriminate when it comes to saving lives? It's about making sure donors are healthy enough to undergo the process. Yes, except many fat people are plenty healthy enough and they still refuse. Exactly, I have no health problems except for being overweight. They could do a health screening and go from there. It's literally a health measure and I'm sorry you can't accept that. It's not a health measure if there's not a health screening. Sorry you can't imagine a world where you face discrimination. Must be such a hard privileged life you lead. I roll, it is. That's why the guidelines you're angry about are in place. Please research before attacking someone's character based on their educated perception. I didn't say don't be fat, or that it's some kind of crime to be, but the reason you can't donate is literally because being overweight puts you at a higher risk of dying under anesthesia. Maybe I'm trying to deliver you facts that could save someone's life instead of obesity doesn't correlate to health, which is just not factual. Didn't say obesity is healthy, but being overweight is also not necessarily unhealthy. Every single person is different and should be tested. I didn't ask for your professional opinion. You don't know me. So take your hateful judgment elsewhere. From Thumbelina. British reality TV personality dares to go from slim, but curvy, to thin and toned over the course of 18 months. FAs are very displeased. Other comments included comparing her body to that of a child. I hope Zara McDermott is happy promoting unhealthy body standards to our young, impressionable audience. This is gross negligence of her platform. Not to be a troll, but is she promoting her 2019 body as fat? Nobody looks like her 2020 body. Shrug. It's actually triggering for girls trying to gain weight. I surely can't be the only one that thinks it's concerning Zara McDermott lost three stone in just over a year. That's about 42 pounds. No hate for her at all. If anything, I feel sad for her. I put a picture here for those who are like me and have no idea who Zara McDermott is. Let me just say, she does not look like a child. Tiram Nezral posted, Hmm, yes, yes it does. That is exactly what eating less and moving more does, at least for the huge majority of people who don't have any physical medical reasons for being overweight. Eating less and moving more does not lead to sustainable weight loss. I took part in an event recently with a variety of students in healthcare fields. They were all future doctors or other allied medical professionals, and I was so disheartened by the fact that extremely few of them had been disabused of the idea that fat people are fat because they either haven't thought to diet or haven't tried hard enough to diet. Even the most basic advice we fat people are given by healthcare providers to help us lose weight, such as eat less and move more, doesn't work. In reality, our bodies undergo a series of metabolic changes that sabotage our ability to maintain any weight loss. This includes making food literally tastier to our taste buds and reducing our energy levels so we move less. Look up the Minnesota Starvation Diet for more details. You can look up the details if you want about this, but they were starving on 1500 calories because of the amount of physical activity they had to do. So reader, in case your medical provider has tried to advise you to lose weight, I just want you to know that you are able to care for your health and well-being without chasing a number on a scale. Dieting of any kind, and by that I mean manipulating food and movement in any way, to purposefully lose weight does not work in the long term but caring for yourself in a weight-neutral way does. Yes, we can be fooled into thinking these weight loss tactics work. How many times have you heard someone say, I lose X pounds in the last Y days? But research shows that the one, two, three, five-year marks, people have regained the weight and usually are gained past their initial starting weight. I can't wait for more of the healthcare providers in the world to catch on to this. All I hear them saying is, if you don't have a 100% chance of success, don't try from Maisie the Amazing. What the fudge? Bad idea, representing gluttony with a fat person. Better idea, representing gluttony with a skinny person who eats a lot since fat people need to consume more energy in the first place and fat people aren't fat due to gluttony anyways. Adam, 
Fat people need to consume more energy. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Normalized insanity. How do they say this and not realize that the end of the sentence is, in order to stay fat? Maisie the Amazing. Fat acceptance is anti-capitalist. Someone, dead butt, was trying to say that fat acceptance is capitalist because it suits the fast food industry. As a leftist fat person, it isn't true. The diet industry makes 60 billion per year. Weight loss teas and certain diets are pushed by rich celebrities. The media, with all its money and power, pushes the narrative that being thin is to be desired. Do you know who the fat activists are? Poor people, people in food deserts. Disabled fat people who can't exercise as much as thin people want them to. People who work 60 hours per week and don't have time to put much exercise in or cook their own meals. People who eat healthy, obviously not in the pockets of fast food, but are fat anyway and are sick of feeling lesser for that. Fat acceptance isn't capitalism, it's survival. Arm the squids. But we never see FAs campaigning against food deserts. In fact, they probably say such a campaign was fat phobic and racist or something. Dark Silver Hawk. Nah, you see them rail against food deserts every so often. But it's more of a, wah, it's not my fault I'm fat, McDonald's is a closer drive than vegetables thing, than any actual concern for the economic systems in play that are causing food deserts. After doing this for over a year, I've yet to find one FA post that said anything about how to solve the food desert problem and not just use it as an excuse. I imagine they must be out there, but I have yet to see it. From questions, please. A friend made this post and tagged me because I wouldn't delete my post about finally loving myself enough to get back into shape. Actively trying to lose weight is saying your body is wrong. It's saying you need to change your body as it is to be happy or worthy or enough. Those of us in recovery know that this isn't true. And those of us in body positivity know that actively trying to exchange your fat body for a thin body goes against all facets of body positivity. There's a body exchange store? You cannot actively preach about loving your body and self-love. If you're also actively trying to lose weight, the two just don't mesh and you're being hypocritical. I know that we like to think that people changing their bodies are trying to love their body better, but if they were actually trying to love their body, they'd be working to love it fat or disabled or scarred. They wouldn't be engaging in activities to change their body so that they then could like it. I'm sorry if that truth upsets you, random person, but hard truths rarely do. If you're one of the people learning to love your body as it is now, and not next pounds, raise your hand. Comment below. Throwaway replied, Just comment with, Actively brushing your teeth is wrong. It's saying you need to change your teeth as they are, to be happy or worthy or enough. And those of us in body positivity know that trying to exchange our naturally dirty teeth for clean, flossed teeth goes against all aspects of body positivity and self-acceptance. From Elmer 2000 Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. It's not that you don't have enough willpower to lose the weight. It's that science has more willpower to keep the weight on. Do you believe in science? Well, science is what allows your body to protect you when it senses famine, also known as dieting. Do you ever notice that when some people talk about science, they mean that they're going to cherry pick a bunch of stuff to mislead you? It's what helps you regain weight that you've worked so hard to lose. Yes, weight gain is your body doing right by you. You can have as much willpower as is humanly possible, and if your body isn't meant to be a lower weight, it won't. That's not your failure to work hard enough, despite what diet culture tells you. That's diet culture's failure to understand how bodies work. You deserve freedom from endless cycles of loss and gain, from incessant monitoring of your weight and food intake. You know what else science says? Higher weight doesn't actually cause poor health. In fact, many people would be considered fat are healthier than those who have the ideal body. Underweight is more harmful. The point is, you're not obligated to live a life of pursuing something as futile as weight loss and then feeling ashamed that you can't outsmart science. Bob the Orange Cat. Science denies ever having said such a thing. From Monji Slayer. She seems pleasant. Ew, 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 ew. Why did so many of my mutuals I thought were body positive like this? Bye. Someone wrote, I just ran an entire mile in 9 minutes and 26 seconds. I used to weigh 363 pounds and now I'm running a mile in under 10 minutes. Pretty good. Very nice. If you're being fat phobic and on a weight loss journey, I'm not going to debate with you on what your BS self-loving motivations are. 
You're fatphobic, you're perpetuating diet culture, you're literally engaged in fat bodies oppression. You can fudge off and get a block. NYC to live. Here we go again. Heaven forbid someone should try to improve their health and or fitness. People who make comments like the last one are just displaying their jealousy and resentment that others can do what they cannot for all to see. If someone made a post saying, Six months ago I couldn't speak a word of Italian, but now after a lot of studying I can understand 90% of what my Italian-speaking only in-laws say, would they consider that unfair to people who find it hard to learn other languages? Hardigan Free If you're anglophobic and on a polyglot journey, I'm not going to debate with you on what your self-loving BS motivations are. You're anglophobic, you're perpetuating multiculturalism, you're literally engaging in monoglot oppression. You can fudge off and get a block. How'd I do? Bellissimo? Mwah. Aaron Fry. Yeah, like, if I'm on my polyglot journey to learn Polish and be tetralingual, and therefore a polyglot, do these people think I'm doing bad for monolingual people who can't speak more than one language? Fudge em. There's no logic behind this kind of poop. No, diet culture my butt. These people are just getting healthy, you lazy butt. From World News. Vegans 43% more likely to suffer broken bones than meat eaters, Oxford study says. Bless Ants Blant. This study doesn't take into account the fact that 12% of vegans are in or have associations with vegan fight clubs. Of course, the vegans can't talk about the fact that they're in a fight club. That's the first rule. I'd tell you the second rule, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Firm relationship advice and a temporary account. Husband obsessed with working out. My husband, they're both 40, has become obsessed with working out and nutrition. He has always been into exercise. Sometimes it's annoying to plan our schedule around his workouts, but I know it's a stress reliever for him. So I've always tried to be understanding, but he's taken it to a new level with hours long workouts and counting macros and weighing his food. I'm getting frustrated and annoyed, quite frankly. We both work full time outside of the home, even during Bud 19, and have two kids. Guess who's taking care of them while he's at the gym. And I'm cooking multiple meals because he won't eat normal food anymore. I feel like I get no time for myself because of his hobby. I get up earlier and stay up late because I'm trying to get everything done at home and work, along with keeping up with everything the kids need. There are other issues that go along with it, of course. I also find his new habit of looking at himself constantly in the mirror a huge turnoff. It's obnoxious. I don't want to be with someone who is obsessed with their appearance. I think it's kind of funny that he stares at himself in the mirror a lot. Is he ever like, Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gorgeous! And I feel insecure because I wonder what kind of in-shape women he's seeing at the gym. I hate that I feel that way, but I do. I eat healthily and I work out at home, but I dislike going to the gym. It's not my thing. I weighed 95 pounds when we got married 15 years ago and have gained 10 pounds. So she's still very tiny. So I'm not obese. But I'm aware I've been gaining weight, and knowing he's around thin women is making me upset. How tiny does she think people are at the gym? How do I talk to him about all of this and still seem supportive? It seems to me you just have to talk to him about the parts that are directly affecting you, which is that you're being left with the kids all the time, and being forced to cook two meals. He needs to do right by you on those things. Everything else is probably just a phase he'll grow out of. From Complex Usernames it's a big dog, I don't know the breed. Black and brown. I've tried a lot of things and would like to dechunk my blue healer, buddy. Is blue healer a breed? Beats me. From Russian Comrade Don. How do I stop my mom from overfeeding her male mixed cat? I'm seriously worried for his health. The cat is gray with black stripes. Over the last five or six months, he's gotten very chunky. From I Like You Cut Just Smack. It's a black shiny cat with yellow eyes. Help with losing weight. From Dukin13 Reddit. An update on Princess, a two-year-old, 8 kilograms, 17 pound chonker. I adopted from the shelter about a week ago. He's one of those cats that look a little bit like Garfield. You can't see how chonky he is, though, because somebody's leg is in the way. He kind of looks like the cat fell asleep on their foot. From Melancholy D Rugs. Pupper's dechunking process complete. It's a black and brown dog, shiny coat, short hair. Super built now. Very thin. For some breeds, this would be too thin. I don't know about for this breed. From Short Beta Bonus, my sweet Chonky Foster. Any tips? She's actually gained 0.4 pounds since we got her, despite no treats and 2-4 to four walks daily, so something isn't quite right. 
It's a yellow dog, maybe a lab? I don't know. I would guess she's sneaking food. From Dreamer Lily, Penny encourages you to weigh your pets to track their progress. It's a white cat with black spots, sitting on top of a scale. Pretty chonky looking. Although it could just be fluff. From Gicker, is my girl fat? It's a brown cat with black stripes. Probably chonkers, but you know how it is with a photo. From Recovering Depresso, day one of dechonkifying, she's blissfully unaware. It's a white cat with some orange coloring. As they describe, the cat looks blissfully unaware of its impending diet. From Law School and Lattes, looking for advice on how to dechonk with multiple cats in the house. There's a giant orange cat laying on the floor and an orange cat laying next to a gray cat on a chair. Between the two of them, they take up the whole chair. How do I dechunk my baby? More in the comments. It's an incredibly fluffy cat. Gray, white, a little bit of brown. There's a picture of him laying on the couch and he looks ridiculously fluffy. From 2 Mecca. Is my boy chunky or big boned? It's just a picture of the cat's butt as it disdainfully walks away from the camera. From Life Blues Zova Blues. It's a black cat with some white spots staring at his food tray. He is not happy about being on a food schedule. 